I'm Jason Kelly from Bloomberg here at the Google Hangout at the summit here in Paris. Got a couple guys joining me talking about a river. Butch Brown, Dave Kleist, you're from St. Cloud, you're from Natchez, Mississippi. Um, but what brings you together is the Mississippi River. Tell me what you're doing here. Well, we are, we're a group of mayors that represent the Mississippi River from the headwaters to the Gulf. I have the northern area in Minnesota and uh, there's Butch here farther, farther south in, in Mississippi and Natchez. Uh, we are a group that came together about three and a half years ago to look at a holistic approach to the Mississippi River. And, uh, and there's a lot of difference. I come from a small piece of the river, it doesn't have any barge traffic, it's predominantly, uh, we receive our water, we're the first city, uh, along with 20 other million uh, Americans who receive their water from the Mississippi River. It's a large agricultural area for us. Um, so we, we take a holistic approach to the river uh, in, in ways that we can protect the asset, utilize the asset that we have. It's the most important river in the world. Um, and we're here in Paris to actually, what well, we started uh, as a group of, you know, looking at the river as a whole, meeting with other river basins all over the world. Uh, the important aspect, if you look at what's going to be taking place uh, in the next 35 years, uh, from a food security aspect, uh, the Mississippi River, in the, uh, is one of those major food producing uh, river basins. Uh, but if you look at in the next 35 years, we're going to have to produce more food than was produced in the last 10,000 years. Uh, so in a lot of the agricultural products, a lot of the food that we eat uh, in the world uh, come down the Mississippi River, produced in that river basin. So uh, from a water uh, to a food security to a lot of issues, so we have so many things in common. Uh, certainly we have the threat in common that all those river basins have, but it's important that we learn best practices and we look at river um, resiliency, um, and that's why we're here. What we've done in, in, uh, in, in the U.S. on the Mississippi River, uh, we're sharing that and working actually with other river basins to create a compact on what we can do uh, yeah. to protect those river basins uh, globally. So, but you're at the other end of the yeah. river, and so what are you seeing? I mean, you've seen some of the real effects, it seemingly, uh, of climate change in terms of water movement, both well, daily most, and, 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 and more dramatically at times. Probably right? the most dramatic thing that's happened to, to the lower Mississippi River, and Mississippi River as a whole, in, in my lifetime of fooling, living on it and, and being a part of it and fooling around with it in business and in government. I, I will just tell you that, that uh, you know, the, the river system uh, has changed. Uh, you know, it's, it's now uh, hugely commercial but it, it's, it's also uh, being recognized again as something that's very recreational. It's, it's a big part of, of, our, of our health, getting water, which is needed uh, throughout the world, certainly in the United States alone. You know, we've got droughts going on in California right now. Uh, we had a severe drought on the Mississippi River in 2010, 2011, we had a 500 year flood. So, you know, something is going on around us and none of us have really spent enough time learning what is happening until just now. In the last 15, 25 years, you know, the world has come awake and said, you know, we're going to do something different because there's some weird stuff happening to, to, to us. Uh, it's hard for a small town, I'm 15,600 people, the oldest city on the Mississippi River, celebrating our 300th anniversary this coming year in 2016. But it's hard for a small town of 15,000 people to grasp the issues of, of, of greenhouse gases and carbon emissions and the weight of vapor and that sort of thing that the big cities and industrial centers of the world have to deal with. But still, all of us, particularly all of us that have this wonderful asset called the Mississippi River Basin, a watershed from the Rockies to the Appalachian, you know, it, we, we have a, a vested interest and we're stakeholders in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Uh, you know, up on the upper Mississippi above St. Louis, you have locks and dams. Terribly, terribly interested, uh, uh, interesting problem up there. The, the locks and dams that, that allow the transportation and the commerce to move into the lower Mississippi where we have no locks and dams, south of St. Louis, you will say. You know, when, when you get up there and you look at the infrastructure of the most commercial water highway in the world, and you got and you got infrastructure in place that's a hundred years old. The locks and dams need to be replaced. They need attention. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you mentioned 
learning from other cities. And obviously, I mean, we're in a city that's defined by its river. London's defined by its river. New York, where I live, is defined by a couple rivers. What's the single best idea you've heard from your peers around the world that you're going to take back to the Mississippi River? Well, right now, uh, you know, there, there are so many issues, uh, so many ideas that we have. Yeah. So trying to narrow it down to one yeah. single issue would be difficult. Yeah. Uh, almost every, uh, just listening in the, in the C40 uh, discussions that were just taking place, uh, we just left. Um, the idea of trying to, um, you know, from, a, from, a, from our perspective on the river is the, is the water quality. So anything that we can do to uh, create better, you know, water quality. Uh, one of the things that, um, you know, we're one of the first cities on the, on the Mississippi River that actually receives this water, mm. uh, and one of the few that put, put it back in. Uh, we, we actually recycle, what we take out of the river before it goes back in, 98% of that uh, is, is recycled and reused, uh, from energy production to, uh, to uh, use on cropland, uh, fertilizer, and of course the water that goes back in. Yeah. He's, very so what, what, He's very proud of that. He likes to say, I'll, <laughs> well, I'll, it's I'll also send the you best, a glass of water. It's the best yeah. tasting water in America <laughs> uh, that comes out of the Mississippi River. Yeah. But I, I think just the, the, the issue of the collaborative effort, uh, actually one of the important things for us is we had a chance to meet with the uh, uh, um, Secretary of Agriculture yesterday, a couple days ago, and uh, just the discussion about what uh, uh, resources are available for communities to collaborate together mm. uh, on issues of uh, reforestation, of issues of, uh, of dealing with water quality, uh, and agricultural, oftentimes the, 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 run the runoff, and then what happens in the northern stem affects the southern stem, yeah. and that's the important aspect of it. So uh, just the, the, the ability to collaborate and learn from each other from that collaboration yeah. and, and some of those resources that help us. We can't do it as a small, as our cities of our, our size. Sure. Yeah. But together we can work at the river as a whole. So that's ten seconds. Best idea you've heard, Butch? Oh, oh my gosh! In just ten seconds to tell you the best idea I've heard, uh, I, I got to say that 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 we we that the idea of, of collaboration and best practices along the whole river yeah. system, because uh, you know what what each of us do affects our neighbor, uh, up or down the river. Either way it goes. And river runs south, the ideas still run north, the problems run north. You know, all of the things that have to do uh, with, with Dave Kleiss and his community, they have to do with us in Natchez, Mississippi. Yeah. They're, they're different, but, but they're, they're the same. Well, gentlemen, Wait, go, yeah, There's go one ahead. thing that was just yeah. intriguing, because you know, when you ask a question like that, there's so many things running through yeah. your head. One thing that was intriguing that I just learned uh, was the area, area of refrigeration using the river and the, and the, and the temperature of the river uh, to, to cool. Yeah. Uh, to air condition place. So that's something that uh, that's the first time I've heard that right. uh, that concept. But we we use geothermal often to actually do the similar type thing, cooling and heating, actually using energy in our, our hockey center, uh, but using the river itself. Uh, that's an idea that uh, needs more exploration. But that's something. Uh, the many ideas. That's one of the aspects of just listening to uh, Mayor Johnson of London talk about all the ideas right. he's able to steal <laughs> from yeah. other cities. And that's what we do. We share those ideas. Uh, the those river's concepts. Clean. You know, basically a clean product, and, and as Dave says, he takes it out, he puts it back better than he got it. But you think about hydroelectric power, you think about nuclear power, you think about water power, all of the things that, that are going on on the river, basically we're still working with a clean, good, a, a right. favorable asset. Good. Gentlemen, we're going to leave it there. Thank you for your work on the Mississippi. Right. Thanks for being here in Paris. It's a Come pleasure see us talking. In to Natchez, Mississippi. Well, for 300, 300 years. years. <laughs> we won't do this, but once every 300 years, you got to so, come. I got to come this time. Butch yeah. Brown, Dave Kleiss, yeah. thank you very much for being with us here on the Google Hangout. Thanks. Thanks.